Welcome to another episode of the Manufacturing Executive Podcast. This show is being brought to you by our sponsor, Cadenas Part Solutions. I'm Joe Sullivan, your host and a co-founder of the industrial marketing agency, Gorilla76. Go ahead and transport yourself back about 15 years or so. It's 2005, and maybe you're in the market for a new car. Perhaps you're doing a little research online. More likely, you're just visiting dealerships because, well, it's 2005, and you're only a handful of years removed from your AOL dial-up connection. Regardless, what you almost certainly aren't doing is jumping on cars.com or Carvana or Auto Trader to make an actual purchase. In fact, to most of us, that idea would have seemed completely insane at the time, but how quickly the world changes. Today, we're not talking about buying and selling cars, although that is a hot topic in my own house right now, but we are talking about e-commerce and specifically e-commerce for manufacturers. Many of you listening right now, like a majority of my clients, might be saying to yourself, nah, this isn't for us. We sell $500,000 equipment through six-month sales cycles with lots of engineering and customizations. E-commerce will never be, never be a part of my world. And okay, that's fair. But there's a reason I used the online car retailer example to kick off this episode. The marketplace is changing. Buyer behavior is changing. And we can't turn a blind eye to that. Be ready. Educate yourself, because if you're not missing opportunities yet, you almost certainly will be soon. So on that note, I'd like to introduce someone who lives right inside this world of B2B e-commerce. Kevin Haar is Chief Operating Officer at SuperBrightLEDs.com, an e-commerce leader specializing in the private labeling of LED lighting. He's been there since 2014, and prior to that, worked in financial services. Kevin has his BS from the University of Vermont and MBA from Washington University in St. Louis. He resides in St. Louis with his wife, Allison, and their three children. Kevin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Joe. I'm excited. Awesome. So can you start by talking a little bit about the shifts that you're seeing in consumer buying behavior in recent years, particularly in a B2B setting? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, we've all kind of seen this uh, over the last 20 years of just the growth of e-commerce and uh, people becoming more and more comfortable and uh, familiar with uh, uh, with e-commerce. But I think over the next, last uh, year in particular, you're seeing this uh, rapid change and this rapid acceleration due to COVID. Um, in terms of like how that impacts B2B, uh, I think, you know, you're seeing now um, kind of this rush uh, for businesses to start looking at opportunities to uh, look for more direct sales uh, to their customers. Um, and also, uh, you know, purchasers are almost requiring it at times, uh, even the government, um, at, you know, is making the push. So uh, you're seeing this just rapid movement uh, to e-commerce, much more transparent and uh, direct. Yeah, I imagine that everything going on this year in particular has just forced people who maybe it was on their minds and they knew it was on the horizon to say, okay, I guess now's the time because you know yeah. people are it's a, stuck in their homes and yeah. you know it's a big thing to to swallow and uh, you know obviously it's a big change and I think a lot of times as a business operator you're uh, thinking yes it's something we want to do but to actually make that commitment and make that change and uh, I think this year was a little bit more of a push for people to do that and also you're seeing it with platforms you know different ERP platforms that were you know traditionally like not necessarily focused on e-commerce now offering kind of more of an opportunity for businesses to do that so uh, you know it's it's definitely there so it's almost becoming more accessible to the the companies who Absolutely. are yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, uh, um, you know, it, just the tools that are out there, the connectors and the ability to um, kind of take your business. It's, I think uh, a lot of times people think it's just this overwhelming process and don't get me wrong. It is, it, 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 it can be tough and, uh, but it's not impossible. And um, just getting the right group of people together to have those conversations. I think uh, it's not necessarily the hurdle that you think it may be. What opportunity, Kevin, do you think that manufacturers um, are missing right now by not embracing e-commerce? Um, you know, I think uh, I kind of alluded to it, you know, before just talking about even not only uh, just these individuals and these purchasing departments that are kind of moving more to e-commerce, but obviously the government too. And uh, But I think people are viewing the world as it is today and not necessarily like what it is for the future. And uh like one of my favorite quotes was uh, from Jeff Bezos. Uh, it was in a book, uh, The Amazon Way. And uh, he mentioned, 
he's basically asked a question like how much further can we go with this and uh, he said like when a factory in paraguay can buy a railroad box car full of bauxite from a mine in china and transact it over amazon then we might be done and so when you think about the efficiencies that still are able that are out there that we can capture um and not necessarily like this really long thick supply chains uh I think for a manufacturer, you have to start thinking to yourself, um, you know, what does not only my purchasing supply chain look like, but like, what is, wh where is the end consumer of the product that I am manufacturing? And, you know, what does that supply chain look for that customer? And, you know, are there other companies out there, our competitors that are taking a more direct route, which would then potentially limit our ability in the future? So, um, I think for a manufacturer, you really need to start thinking bigger and thinking about the challenges that are out there, um, not necessarily just stuck in this old, the, the traditional way of this is the way we've done business, this is the way we've sold, um, and start thinking about, you know, what potential impacts are there for newer, innovative businesses that can take a more direct route to the end consumer, which would obviously lower cost. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Well, let's see here. You were you and I were recently talking about this idea that you know moving into e-commerce is much more strategic, uh, or more a more strategic play than just saying, "Hey, we've got an online store now." Right? Yeah. Um, can you talk about the impact that selling online will have, sort of throughout different parts of the organization, from operations to your product offering to sales? Yeah, I think the biggest mistake um, you can make when you're thinking about e-commerce is just viewing it as another sales channel. Um, to me, like it, yeah, I mean, you could take that, but it's a pretty limited view of what it is. Um, you know, if you're thinking of it as a business that, uh, you can make it easier for your current customers to transact online. Well, that's like, you know, very, uh, uh you're not taking advantage of everything that you're about to be able to do. And, uh, for me, like looking at it, um, it's, it's a very, uh, e-commerce is much more of an operational uh, product line. Uh, there are other decisions that need to be made than just having a conversation with your salespeople saying, hey, you know, we're bringing this e-commerce channel in and this may impact your your commissions. You know, it's it's a much more of like, what not, new products can we offer? What were we not able to offer before? Um, how as a business are we able to operate uh, in terms of that? Well, what does inventory look like? You know, so it's... Uh, uh, it's a much larger complex element, I think. And to be really su successful, and I didn't even get into marketing yet. I mean, obviously your marketing is going to change, you know, so it's uh, it becomes much more digital. So um, it is definitely a, a, a bigger than just, this is our new sales channel. Uh, I mean, you could view it that way, but I think, you know, if you really want to take it and embrace it, it's, uh, it's a much larger, complete uh, picture of the business. So. Yeah, I, I imagine that, you know, in, in a lot of organizations, this idea of e-commerce and selling online is is intimidating to the sales force inside that organization because they they probably feel a little threatened. Like, um, <laughs> I, I think of if you're a fan of The Office, anybody listening, I think back to like the early seasons when they they implemented their their like Dunder Mifflin online portal and and everybody was you know freak. Oh, the whole sales team was freaking out that their <laughs> their sales commission was be gone. They were being replaced by a computer. But but I, I think that you know th that episode was probably done because there's some truth to it, and I'm sure people even today see that where as opposed to thinking, okay, what opportunity is there now? Like you said it a minute ago, right? What, what could we, what are we able to offer now that maybe we, we weren't able to in the future, in the past? Yes. Um, I think there's definitely opportunity. And I think that's something where it, you know, you have to have a more kind of complete conversation with the uh, the sales team because if you do bring it in just as this another sales channel, it does turn into this competition. But if you are able to offer these new product lines, it, it creates new opportunity then for the salespeople to get further reach into these businesses. And if you view e-commerce as more of a like complementary ecosystem almost that like you kind of reside in, and the sales is also a part of that to further accelerate it into the business, I think you really start can change the way the organization thinks about it, where as an, uh, as a salesperson, you're, it's less of a threat and more of an opportunity. And um, I think if you're not thinking that way, you know, 
even as a salesperson, if you're like, this is a threat, that's a very short-sighted thought because this is coming whether it's your business or not. And so, you know, it, it's like, uh, you're, you know, you're going to have to face this reality one way or the other. And you may as well be in a world where you can grow with it instead of trying to fight this wave that's about to just destroy you. So oh, it's like, it's like any other type of technology. You'd be like somebody in the early 1900s, uh, you know, fighting the, the coming of the car because they're, they're convinced they're going to be able to, you know, have a horse and my carriage. Horse, yeah. My horse and buggy is great. Their lives. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's really not, it's really not so different. Like this is here. Um, you know, I think it's, it's interesting too, because like a lot of the, you know, we work with, with mid-sized manufacturers, a lot of them sell very complex, um, custom, you know, big ticket items through long sales cycles. And it's, it's, you know, things like that, I, I imagine are not in a lot of ways, aren't, aren't maybe moving to e-commerce, but there's a component of most of their businesses where there are more standard items. There's, you know, or like aftermarket parts, for example, or things that are, are complementary to maybe yep. the bigger ticket item. And I, and I see those opportunities being missed already by, a, by yeah. a lot of businesses or they're just not sure what to do with it. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. And uh, you know, and not only just in terms of like uh, other kind of uh, these commodity replacement parts or, or whatever they may be that you're you know selling online, but uh, even like the service element of it and uh, just giving that digital footprint for your businesses and support and, you know, content related to that. Um, yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, I would totally agree. And yeah, it's these longer, you know, year, year and a half sales cycles, huge, you know, pieces of equipment, yeah, tough, but there's, there's other elements of the business too, where you can start exploring and, you know, and also be getting, reaching into some, maybe some other businesses that you may not have before to then sell that larger sales cycle. So Sure. Yep. Yep. But yeah, and you know, even even there though, when you think about it, like I mean, who would who would have guessed ten years ago that you'd be bu buying and selling cars online, right? Yeah. I mean, and and it's dogs, happening. dogs. Yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. you name it. I mean, it's just uh, like you have living creatures that are you know being sold. I mean, so if you think your product is not susceptible to e-commerce, and going back to that Bezos quote, I, I think mm -hmm. it's quite silly. <laughs> so yeah. one thing I wanted to ask you about was e-commerce platforms. I'm just kind of curious, like, are there softwares or platforms that that you really stand behind or think are, are worth looking at for anybody here who's listening and thinking about moving into e-commerce? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, there's a lot and I could just like list them, but, uh, I, you know, I, I think for a business, and I, and I will mention some of them as we talk, but uh, before even kind of getting stuck in like a, a, you know, with talking to some like a, a salesperson of a platform, um, I think there's really has to be like a lot of internal conversations before that even moves forward. Because again, going back to that, you know, sales, you know, what are we, what are we going to be? And uh, before you kind of get stuck in a sales pitch and just trying to compare platforms, I think you really as an organization need to have that strategic understanding of, you know, how we will move forward and how we are going to address. I mean, there's going to be challenges. There's going to be uh, operational challenges, people challenges. I mean, it, you name it, but you know, where is that united front? You know, what is the end goal of this? It's not just to get on a platform, but it's to change this business. And, um, but yeah, it's, uh, you're seeing big companies, Adobe buying Magento. Uh, Magento is a big uh, e-commerce platform. Um, so so it, it, you're seeing like more and more resources come in. And when the money starts flowing into these businesses and these platforms, it's just going to become easier more um, uh, for other businesses to get on it. And again, so just from a competitor's perspective, um, yeah, you're going to face challenges if you're not considering it and thinking about those platforms. So. Well, while you brought up this, this topic of challenges, like what are some of these, you know, potential roadblocks or hurdles that you, you might see a manufacturer sort of running into um, as they start thinking about implementing? I mean, I just think if, I think the really comes down to like sales channels, probably the biggest, if yeah. you start thinking about how a manufacturer sells um, and you start thinking about the, like from manufacturer to a distributor, you know, to, you know, sometimes there's even an agent in between that agent and the distributor. And then, um, you know, the, uh, the qualifications or games that are played between the distributor and the manufacturer in terms of sales, rebates, you name it, you know, all of that creates complexities and challenges and risks to the business of changing. So, um, you know, that is obviously a really big thing. And then just people, you know, because you're going to start sticking your resources into different things when you start moving to e-commerce. And I mentioned marketing before, you know, marketing becomes much more of a digital presence instead of a, you know, billboard magazine, you name it, wherever you're going. So, um, but th there's benefits there. Um, 
and, and you're just going to start realizing there's organic opportunities of marketing too. And it's not just, Hey, I got to pay a dollar to get this return. You know, you, you can start writing really good, fresh contact and content. And it's not even necessarily adding headcount. You know, you can use leverage freelancers. You can leverage just, you know, your, your own customers, you know, for testimonials, you name it. And, you know, you do this, you don't probably want anything, but it, it's just uh, all of that starts, you know, adding, you know, collateral or, or value to the business, you know, through backlinks and everything that, you know, the, these the manufacturers probably aren't even aware of in terms of what opportunity there are, but it's, it adds real value for a longer period of time than, you know, throwing up a billboard or putting a magazine ad in the February, you know, 2020 edition. So. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And, and it is something that, you know, it's kind of in, in my world here, but you're, you're building equity in your brand when you can shift your marketing approach to align with, you know, your e-commerce strategy, like you said it, you, you create a piece of content. I mean, some of my clients, not necessarily in the e-commerce world, but it's content that they produced five, six years ago that are, are still generating qualified opportunities for them every week. And, yeah. you know, as opposed to, I always talk about this, this concept. Um, I think I, I think I stole this from Joe Polizzi of the Content Marketing Institute, but this idea of renting versus owning real estate online, like you, you know, when you, when you create a piece of content and it gains authority and adds sort of authority to your business in the online space, well, now you've got visibility in the search engines that you can kind of, you kind of own it until somebody starts doing a better job and, and you know, you're not paying for that anymore when you're ranking first or second or third organically for some, you know, some problem or product or question that your, your ideal customer is, is searching as opposed to, like you said, running a billboard or a, a print ad or, um, you know, even trade shows where you know, it's, it's sort of a one and done thing. Like you stop paying and, and your visibility goes away. So I, I like that mindset of shifting your whole, your company's whole mindset to being more digital. Yeah, it is. It's, uh, I mean, and like I said, there's challenges and it's, uh, and you, like you said, you know, for people looking at this, it's like, well, it sounds so overwhelming. It sounds stressful, mm-hmm. but it's really just talking to people. And, um, you know, I, I go back to like, you know, when I started my career and, uh, I, you know, I sat and I spent a lot of time just talking to, um, yeah, people that were very successful that, um, you know, not only just professionally, but personally, you know, and how did they balance that? What did they do? And there was no sales pitch. It was just me learning. And I think as a business operator, um, you know, for me going into the, uh, to the professional world is something that is brand new. I had no idea, you know, it's just, I'm just trying to grow. And if you're a business operator and you've been biz- growing a business for a long period of time, but now we're at this, you know, precipice, you know, essentially of like, you know, like, of like what, you know, this change. And I think, you know, going back to like that process of just having conversations and, you know, trying to learn and re-understand your business. And it's not to say you can't change. You've created significant value, whether it's your, you know, product, supply chain, um, your sales, your whatever those assets are inside your business. And they can still be leveraged to this. And it was kind of like what you were suggesting, like, you know, when a business maybe has these like ancillary, like items, you know, you know, moving those online. So it's just finding those opportunities, but I think really spending the time just to have those conversations. And that's why I mentioned to you about trying to avoid just going to an e-commerce platform and just right away getting caught in the sales pitch. And then all of a sudden you have this sales channel. Well, it's, you know, really that, deep down learning and understanding and reflection on you know, your business yourself and like what you're trying to build. So I don't know. I think that's yeah. like important. It's a good ad. I mean, and that's, that's probably kind of where it all needs to start, but you know, as, as people who are listening here, you know, who are thinking, yeah, okay. I, I know I've been thinking about this for a while. I need to, I need to start moving toward e-commerce. They're probably feeling some intimidation probably have been for a while. Like, what, what are some resources or where would you point people? Like how, how can people get started educating themselves about, you know, what are all the ways this is going to impact my business? Where do I even jump off? And yeah. uh, I think just, um, 
you know, you, you start looking at like competitors, you start looking at your supply chain, you start looking at uh, business people, companies that you do business with that may do this well. Um, and then, yeah, you just reach out and you start having conversations. I mean, me, you know, I, I talk to people about this, you know, it's, you know, th that's not something uh, that is unnatural for people to have these conversations and the talk people want to help other people. Um, and there are resources online, but again, I think it's, you know, when you're not getting that two-way feedback and that reflection, you know, it's just this, like, if it turns more into a sales pitch or some type of video that's just thrown at you, you're not really going to get that complete. It's, I don't think it's going to help you as much as just, you you know, simple conversations with people. Um, and, you know, there's other, you know, I'm sure uh, consultants and stuff that work on this that aren't necessarily like representing a single product, but uh, that may help. But I think kind of getting in and having conversations with people that are like operators and, and that have done it before, I think is probably where you're going to get the most bang for your buck because they're going to kind of understand some of the challenges that you're directly going to be facing that maybe someone that's just, uh, you know, a consultant, you know, may not see sometimes. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. So start with your network. So look at who who's done it, who's maybe had some success or probably stumbled along the way too, I'm sure. And just start sort of learning that way, huh? Yeah. Talking to people, like you like said, that I'm sure the people that have created sales channel, they, they may, you may hear from them. Well, this is, you know, it's just a, it's just a sales channel shift. It's not that great. And then you're thinking, okay, well, you know, I heard from Kevin, he was saying, you know, well, that's a potential, you know, thing that could happen. You know, it, it, you start building and, and building a story and a narrative and seeing the pros and the cons of it all. So. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, well, Kevin, anything else you'd, you'd like to add to this conversation that we haven't touched on that you think would be helpful to listeners? No, I just think it's an exciting time. And uh, I think people, um, you know, for businesses to, to really kind of adapt and to, to grab hold of this, uh, it's not too late, you know? And I think sometimes people think it is too late. Oh, Amazon, they're huge. Well, no, like it's, there's a, this, this pie is growing, you know? And so it's uh, the pie that you're currently in is shrinking. The other pie is growing. So, you know, even if you're doing it poorly, you know, maybe you can continue to grow. So it, it's, there's plenty of opportunity still there. It's not um, too late and you just don't want to be, you know, five, 10 years from now, having this conversation and then you probably will be too late. So get out ahead of it while you can, right? Yeah, exactly. So great. Well, yeah. Well, Joe, it was a pleasure. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Thanks for coming yeah. on, man. This was yeah. re really great. Appreciate you sharing your wisdom and experiences from, you know, from your own, um, I, I guess everything you've gone through in, in, uh, this e-commerce world. So, yeah, well, thanks. So well, what's, I, what's, uh, the best way for somebody to get in touch with you if they maybe like to learn a little bit more or, um, you know, yeah, I mean, maybe yeah, pick happy. your brain a little. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can hit me up on LinkedIn. That's fine. Uh, that's probably the best way. You know, Kevin Har. Um, you know, I I think that's probably yeah, like the best way to get after me. So great. It's Kevin Har H A A R. So check out Kevin on uh, LinkedIn. Awesome. Well, uh, I would like to say thank you once again to our sponsor, Cadenas Part Solutions, for helping making helping to make this episode possible. And Kevin, thanks again for taking the time to join me today. Yeah, thanks, Joe. Really enjoyed it. As for the rest of you, I hope to catch you on the next episode of The Manufacturing Executive.